Cafe Anyway, here we are at Cafe Anyway. Mike's Daily Podcast. Hello, I'm Mike Matthews. I am your host here at Cafe Anyway in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth. Mike's Daily Podcast. In a married topic, because uh, we got a lot of topics. Maybe you're thinking of space. The final frontier, it's way out there. It's a place where there's aliens and vacuums and uh, not those Hoovers, the things that you use to maneuver through your house to get the dust all up. No, it's not that thing. Mike's Daily Podcast. It's space as we relive our lives in what we tell you. Mike's tell you. Daily Home podcast by the sea. Yeah, I'm singing Genesis. That's the video. I watched a video, not a. I don't think Genesis ever made a Home by the Sea video. I think there's just like a live performance of them doing it. But there is video that Phil Collins did on an old video recorder back in the early '80s, where he just wanted to document what it is that those guys do when they put an album out, and they had just. Got in the farm, what they called the farm, a recording studio out on a farm, so they could do all the recording themselves and bring the producer Hugh Pag. I always want to call him Hugh Pagden, but I don't think that's it. But this famous producer that that he had uh, worked with, uh, oh, Peter Gabriel, Melissa Etheridge, The Police. And so it's just to watch all of them working together Mike Rutherford, Tony Banks, Phil Collins, it's amazing. But now let's talk about space. The quest to find life on a planet beyond Earth is intrinsically linked to the search for water in the cosmos and on other planets. As one of the universe's most abundant molecules, water is vital for all known forms of life, serving as the universal solvent, essential for critical biological reactions. This from Earth.com. Now, the understanding drives... And here's today's podcast picture. Astronomers' excitement when they detect signs of water vapor on distant exoplanets. The podcast picture is not of an exoplanet, but of an animal on our very own planet, particularly Patches. And he has... He, he adopted me and my lovely lady friend back in basically 2020. And we've been taking care of him, although it's... <laughs> The late great Basil the Boxer may have even known Patches. We're not sure. But yes, there was there was a time. There might have been some overlap between the two. But Patches, we can't get to a vet because he is so wild and you can't pick him up. And he lets you pet him, but then he's off. So anyway, there's a picture of him. I see it at Mike'sDailyPodcast.com. He's the celebrity. He's the celebrity cat. So there's the planet GJ9827D. This exoplanet no longer, oh, wait, it is, sorry, no larger than twice the size of Earth may possess a water rich atmosphere. However, with temperatures soaring to 800 degrees Fahrenheit, eh, and that's like Venus. This planet, this exoplanet, is far from hospitable. It's a world shrouded in steam. Rather than a potential home for life as we know it Now A recent observation by NASA's Hubble Space Telescope Marks a significant milestone In exoplanet research Because Hubble detected water vapor In the atmosphere of this exoplanet The smallest exoplanet Where such a discovery has been made The finding nudges us closer To identifying planets With environments akin to Earth And then of course you know What happens then People go, oh, maybe there's life forming. Maybe there's algae. Maybe there's this and that. Maybe there's cats. Cats in space. Maybe pigs in space. MTV News. You hear it first. Addenda with Kevin. Speaking of technology, there's some life saving technology. That became available almost 20 years ago But it is still not widely used Let's see, it says here Oh, yes In pertaining to helping us 
with it, uh, what do you call it? Chronic and life threatening infections and inflammation. That is the big topic these days. You know, there's a real scary holiday coming up. DNA testing may have been used for the last 30 years in criminology and every forensics file and CSI episode, but the medical establishment has for years resisted adopting its diagnostic use for bacterial and fungal infections. This came from the folks over at truthpr.com. They said, did you know chronic infections afflict millions each year in the United States and kill untold numbers? Often the bacterial and fungal sources of these infections are misdiagnosed because of the medical establishment's reliance on culture and sensitivities or CNS. You know, I mean, people, you know, people get stuck on stupid. You know what I mean? The Lancet reported that 1.2 million people died across 204 countries in 2019 from antimicrobial resistance also known as AMR people administered antibiotics that proved ineffective the rate of death from antimicrobial resistance outpaced mortality from HIV AIDS or malaria millions of patients are struggling with chronic and often life threatening infections who are being Denied the benefits of a new diagnostic testing technology based on DNA analysis. It's called Next Generation Sequencing or NGS. DNA testing may have been used for the last 30 years in criminology, but the medical establishment has for years resisted adopting its diagnostic use for bacterial and fungal infections. This is Mike's Podcast Picnic. That's Interesting that's also the topic about fighting inflation. Inflation, well, that's a whole other topic, but yes, inflation's here in Ameritopica. As we go outside a cafe, anyway, somewhere in Podcast Row Valley, the last place on earth, yes, anyway, inflation. We're fighting that with uh, what are we doing to fight inflation? I guess we're. We're trying to stay uh, Employed Is that it? It, Because when the employment rate Let's see How does this work? If the employment rate Goes down Inflation goes down As I recall One person saying When it goes up Yes when unemployment goes up Inflation Goes down. Mike is on it, man. man. Go with no man is gone. Before. We love it, Mike. Magnification. And we can just think about that for a minute, if that is true or not. But I hope to keep my job. But you know, there is less of the resignation, the mass resignation going on. That was about two years ago, I recall. There is people. There. Well, in f- the. Fed is going to be Possibly this year bringing inflation Down last year There was all this talk About oh a recession's on the horizon A recession and it just did not happen Inflation went up And it's supposed to come down But like many say Inflation goes up with an elevator And it comes down the stairs Very slow Escalator Even So that it makes it Difficult for people renting Renters spending too much income on housing Rent is the largest expense for most households The number of renters who are spending more than 30% of their income on rent and utilities Hit a record high of $22.4 million. Housing is generally considered affordable If it costs no more than 30% of one's gross income But here were people spending more than 30% Spending... No, uh, spending more than that is known as rent burdened or cost burdened. Half of U.S. renters in 2022 were spending more than 30% of their incomes on rent and utilities. This according to the Harvard Joint Center. Let's see. I have my cat here. Rocky the cat to explain more. Woo! Oh, instead he passed gas. Oh, 
Cat gas is no fun, everybody. Just letting you know. Uh, up to 3.2 percentage points from before the pandemic in 2019 is where we are with half of U.S. renters in 2022 spending more than 30% of their income on rent and utilities. 12.1 million were severely cost burdened, spending more than half of their incomes on housing. Rent increases rose nearly 20% between 2021 and 2022, but they came down a little bit in 2023. Welsh on the world. This all from Rob Black. I produce his podcast. Well, the podcast is called Rob Black Show. And he has a radio show that is on AM 1220 KDOW in the Bay Area. Monday through Friday in the 8 o'clock hour. And he is also on television on Cron. Monday through Thursday in the 9 o'clock hour. Peak 65 will hit the U.S. this year. Here comes the silver tsunami. U.S. retirements are set to break records this year. About 11,000 Americans will turn 65 every day. That is 4.1 million people over the whole year. Known as Peak 65. About one in four U.S. adults support a parent who's 65 plus as well as a child. So, wow. Hats off to you if you are doing that. This will create big issues for the labor force. Aging offices since 1980s, the percentage of workers 60 plus has doubled. And the share of workers under 40 has fallen from 60 to 45%. The Royal Trump Tweet Decree. Decree. And that means that, well, that's true, actually. I can think of one example. My former boss, he retired at like 72. Whoa. Mass retirement, more than half of pilots will reach their mandatory retirement age at 65 in the next 15 years. So that should create a huge opening for pilots if you want to be a pilot. Now's your time. 43% of 55 to 64 year olds have no retirement savings at all. In 2022, they didn't. And so heading towards a retirement cliff. And hold on to your desks. Nearly one in five Americans age 65 plus was employed last year, up from one in 10 in 1987. Wow. Now it's one in five. So, oh, and there's a burrito boom going on. Chipotle said it's adding 19,000 new employees to its 110,000 person workforce ahead of its busy burrito spring season. A 27% increase from last year's and offering perks like 401k matching and help with student debt. If you work at Chipotle. And as we mentioned yesterday, Dwayne The Rock Johnson scored a $30 million payday after agreeing to join the board of the WWE parent TKO. The news came as Netflix announced a $5 billion deal to be the exclusive home of WWE's wrestling show show called Raw. And The Rock is now the owner of his name, the trademark The Rock. Self-checkout is alienating shoppers. I was at a Costco the other day and I saw all these lines. And I had no idea that this Costco had a self-checkout until I left. And I thought, oh, I could have done that. Although when you are self-checking out at Costco, it's, well, the amount of stuff I get, it's kind of a nightmare. No, it is a nightmare. Self-checkout might be making customers less loyal to stores that use the self-checkout. The theft is an issue and customers expect service, including human checkout, while shopping. Oh, and the Oscar nominations. Yeah, by now you've heard that Margot Robbie and the director. Oh, I can't think of her name at the moment. But she, the two of them did not get nominated. For Best Actor and Best Director, respectively. 
I got through that. I got into it. <laughs> and that's a big snub. And people are like, wow, this is the way that art is imitating life. And because the movie Barbie was about the patriarchal establishment blocking women from big wins. When you are a man, sometimes you wear stretchy pants. Gee. Something like that. Here, I will get that name. But yes, the. You will travel into the incredible universe. Big ol- you know, and, and what's funny is all summer long I was seeing her and Margot Robbie and uh, Ryan Gosling. And so it was. <laughs> it's amazing. It's not in my mind at the moment. Um, that, that Greta Gerwig. I knew it was something with a G. Two G's, as a matter of fact. And I'm sure somebody calls her GG and she finds it annoying. So Netflix leads Oscar nominations, though, with 18. A lot of people are expecting that. It was a great week for Netflix. They had a great earnings report. So they are doing very well. Lots of subscribers. They've got they've broken records for subscribers. Apple comes in second with 13 nods. Yes, it's an amazing world. I still think if you, you probably take it for granted now, but not that long ago, there was no streaming services having Oscar nominated movies. Not that long ago at all. In fact, if you would have suggested the idea, people would have laughed. Streaming services getting nominated for Oscars? What, like YouTube? Well, someday there will be a YouTube movie, a YouTube only movie that will get nominated for an Oscar. This show is I probably won't go see it. Pretty much. Yeah, if it's on YouTube, I will. I watch too much stuff on YouTube. We're outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth, and the wonderful country of Ameritopica with all these topicas. So many topicas to get to. Joe Bands Mutations. 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 Fabagoo. Things to do. Things to do. Look who is here. Hello, Michael Masters, Madame Brudebega. Hello, Dave Mike. This is Valentino, the Barking Attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, we was getting confused there. Who are you talking to? D. Yeah, who are you talking to? Do you know that? It's a. It's a. I'm just, uh. Kathy's Corner. Da 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 da. Kathy's Corner. Mike's cassette copy Holding court with Lady Katie. <laughs> That's right. So, how how are you guys doing, M- Madam Rutabaga? Are you happy? Yes. Do you do you like being on my podcast? Yes. Are you gonna have a great weekend? No. Well, the weekend. Magnification. The maybe the next weekend will be a good one. That's what I'm asking about. The future weekend, not this weekend. Whatever. Okay, that's the end of the podcast. Got a little confused at the end. I want to thank you for bearing with me. Go to the website, mikesdailypodcast.com. Check out the podcast picture from today. It's wonderful. And also, while you're there, you can listen to the wonderful radio station that I have on my website. Yes, there. but you got to scroll down to the towards the bottom. And you can call in and tell me. What you think about all the things that we covered on the podcast? Here's the phone number. Call Mike at the Cafe Anyway Hotline. Area code 510-228-4640. And with more ways to reach me here at my home by the sea, it is a frame. Mike's TV podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.